Welcome to Drug Air Talk. Uh, today we're discussing Prilosec, how it works in the human body, the mistakes that can be made with it, uh, what the consequences of those mistakes would be, and what you should do if you're the patient or a loved one is affected by these mistakes. My name is Matt Hamilton. I'm a trial attorney specializing in drug errors, and I'm joined today with Dr. Jesse Garcia. Welcome, Dr. Garcia. How are you? Uh, Dr. Garcia, what is your area of specialty? I am a clinical pharmacist specializing in drug interactions and the effects of those drugs on the human body. Okay. Prilosec OTC, does it have a generic name? It does. Uh, the generic name is omeprazole. Okay. Uh, omeprazole or Prilosec, is it something you can buy without a prescription? Uh, it is available over the counter, so you can walk into your local pharmacy and just uh, pick, a, pick a bottle of it up. Okay. Uh, how does it work in the human body? So omeprazole is in a class of drug called uh, proton pump inhibitors. In essence, what it does is it uh, shuts off the body's ability to produce acid uh, and then secrete that into the stomach. Okay, all right. Why would somebody be taking a drug like Prilosec? Typically used for um, heartburn, uh, symptoms of GERD. Uh, so if you basically have uh, acid reflux, you would want to take this because it would shut off the pumps uh, that were producing acid. Can errors be made with uh, the taking of Prilosec? Correct. Um, you, can, you can see pretty much an error with almost any medication, but specifically this class. Uh, what we see is that most patients don't use it correctly uh, as pharmacists. And that might, be, that might stem from the fact of uh, they were never told how to take it. There's a specific way it should be done. Uh, in the case of these proton pump inhibitors, you have to take it at a minimum of 30 minutes to an hour before eating, okay? Uh, basically, the, the, the way acid is produced when you eat is you will eat, the food will hit the receptors, uh, basically tell the body, okay, I have food in my stomach now, now I need to produce acid. Okay. Okay. So what these drugs do is they go in and shut off the pump so that when you eat, you don't have as much acid produced. Okay. Okay. And so that's, that's in essence how it works. Can somebody take Prilosec too long? Uh, Prilosec is not intended to be taken too long. And, and in fact, when you go to your local pharmacy and see the over-the-counter versions of it, um, you typically see it in a tablet form, which is nothing more than just the formulation that you typically see over-the-counter. You can't see capsules, but typically it's tablet. Um, you can see it taken for too long in terms of it's intended to be taken for a two-week period of time. Okay. And then... If that doesn't cure it, then you can wait a certain amount of time and then take another two-week uh, treatment. But we don't often see it used that way. We typically see it used almost as a maintenance drug like you might see a blood pressure medication. Used. What is the outside limit on time that somebody might be able to take Prilosec without risk of complications? Complications, I would say, uh, if I was giving the recommendation, no more than three months. Okay. By three months, you should have already determined what is the cause of it. You typically don't see uh, acid reflux as just manifesting out of itself. There's typically some uh, other mitigating factors. Maybe the patient eats large meals, they drink a lot of um, uh, coffee, they might have a lot of acidic foods that are in their diet. And so that's when you typically see those symptoms um, increase. Okay. So you've gotta make changes to that in hopes of then preventing long-term use. Okay. Are there any drug interaction issues with Prilosec? There are drug interaction specific um, to omeprazole. You have direct direct drug interaction, so this drug can't be taken with this drug because it will cause you know, this result. Okay, so we have those with this drug. We also have issues where this drug might indirectly affect the body's ability to absorb, um, be it other drugs or vitamins. So uh, you see decreased levels of acid in the stomach, and some uh, drugs are designed to work at a specific acidity level or specific pH uh, in the stomach. Uh, be it absorption or uh, just its uh, activation. And so we have to make sure that we try to maintain um, a kind of a stable acidic level so that these drugs can be absorbed as they should. And if not, it can affect it and that can go, you know, on the high side, the drug works better. The drug doesn't work as good. And that just depends on each individual drug and uh, the specific acidity level. Well, let us presume the worst happens and one of these drug error happens with Prilosec. What sort of consequences uh, might happen to a patient? 
Well, what we can typically see is, um, and some of the ways that that happens, these consequences are with suspension. So this is one that is, uh, can be mixed up and given to children. Okay. Um, or patients who, uh, for whatever reason, may not be able to uh, take the capsule or the tablet. Okay. Okay. And so what we see is, uh, you know, there's problems with the, the, the mixing or it's not uh, measured correctly. So those problems then manifest themselves into potential kidney problems, one of which is called uh, interstitial cystitis, which is basically, um, sorry, interstitial nephritis. Uh, which is basically inflammation of the inner tubules of the kidney. Okay. Okay. It also can manifest itself in uh, forms of lupus. Uh, patients see that uh, they may have those symptoms, and then after discontinuation, uh, the symptoms uh, will resolve, or in well, some when cases... When we're talking about lupus, what sort of symptoms are we talking uh, about? Typically what you'd see is uh, red patches uh, within the skin. Uh, it can be uh, large, they can be uh, spread out throughout the body, or they can be localized to one area, just depending on um, uh, the intensity or the severity of the, of the, the outbreak. And okay. then uh, the, lastly, what we see, uh, which is actually something that got put out class-wide for these types of medications, is the instances of uh, C. diff, which is basically an infection that takes over the, um, takes over the, the, the intestines and gut and causes some pretty bad diarrhea. How serious can C. diff as an infection be? C. diff in and of itself is very contagious. So um, from just a standpoint, if you're looking at the spread, it's a big deal. Um, hospitals go through uh, several training programs just specifically on C. diff for the control. You'll see posters posted through the hospitals about it um, and training and such. Uh, untreated C. diff or C. diff that cannot be controlled uh, can then manifest itself into something called toxic megacolon. And uh, that is uh, some pretty bad stuff. Gotcha. So somebody with a drug error in Prilosec, they could have serious kidney damage, uh, highly serious infection, um, or even uh, signs of lupus. Correct. Okay. All right. Well, Dr. Garcia, it's been informative being with you today. Thank you. Thank you. This has been Drug Error Talk. We're talking about Prilosec, and the uh, generic name is... Omeprazole. Omeprazole. Uh, if you want additional information... Uh, you can look to our website uh, for research on it and anything else you need to find. We also have some good links. It's at worldwideweb.law-kc.com. Uh, also look to our YouTube channel uh, for additional vi videos. Uh, this is Drug Air Talk. I'm Matt Hamilton. Thank you.